Hey guys, hey cocktails, hey birdie, birdie people, birdie, birdie, birds. So a couple days ago, I posted a time-lapse drawing and enough of you guys liked it that I kind of want to make it a thing. But the thing is, I'm an illustrator by trade, but I don't really feel like I have a true style. I just started following this YouTuber named Frenard. Frenard? Frenner? You see her videos here. She's awesome. Everything that she does is unified. She uses the same font for all of her stuff. Like, she's she's got a visual voice and a very clear one. And she talked about, in one of her videos, finding her illustrative style. Basically, she inspired me to try to do that myself. I've been an illustrator for a couple years now, but I haven't been doing it to pay the bills. I want to be. And I think something that's important for me to do right now is to nail down my style. And since I'm doing this YouTube thing, why don't I do it on film? So hi, hello, this is part one of this series. What am I gonna call it? Um, I'll think about the title later, and then I'll make a graphic of it, and I'll put it right here. You ready? Like I said before, I've been doing this for a little while, so I do have some work under my belt. The thing is, it's not really unified. It doesn't all look like the same person did it. Ta-da! Here's what I've done. It's a collection of both comic-y things, detail, not detail, bright colors, subtle colors, in order to perform well as a freelance illustrator, you have to be counted on for a style. Clients have to be able to know that when they come to you, they will be getting what they ask for. So they don't want to take a shot in the dark at somebody who does a bunch of different things but may not be able to do the one thing that they need them to do really, really well. So in this flip... So today I want to talk about influences. Who are some artists, living or dead, who have influenced my work to this point and who I want to be in the forefront of my mind moving forward? Something you should know about me, I really enjoyed anime when I was a kid, so a lot of what I did growing up was like big eyes, tiny nose, tiny mouth. I gotta say, the artist who's had the biggest impact on me throughout the years has gotta be Muka or Mucha. It's ironic that he's so influential, and yet I still don't know exactly how to pronounce his name. I have two Mooka prints, and I actually have a portrait of him sitting over there. I don't have pictures of my friends or my family. I don't have pictures with me and, and Mike. N none of that. I do have a picture of a deceased artist that greets me every time I, I walk in the door. So that's a little bit about my life. So Mooka, here are a couple of the pieces that Mooka does. Did. He's one of the people who spearheaded the Art Nouveau movement, and he's really well known for this like noodle hair thing that he did. Something I want to point out about his artwork is if you look at the hands and the faces, they're very detailed. Most of his artwork focuses on line and color, except for the complexities that you can find within the faces and the hands. Springboarding from that, Lois von Barl, otherwise known as Loish on the internet, is one of the people that I've been following since I was probably 12 and she was 16. What? Inappropriate. These are some pieces that I like specifically for the colors, the forms, and the way that they treat the hair. A lot of her line work isn't black. She colors her line art in specific ways. So on the windowsill, since it's a sunset scene, you see a lot of like reds reflected on the opposite side of where the sun is going down. Next I've got Sachin Tang who is all oh, the best. Guys, if I, I hope that this video is interesting to you. It might be a little self-indulgent, but what is YouTube if not self-indulgent? Oh, I itch my nose when I'm in... in Secure. Ugh. Sachin Tang is great. He uses negative space really, really well, simplistic forms, and really, really complex, interesting ideas. I like how he blends surrealism with technology, and his color choices are always really, really good, and he started animating recently, which is something that I want to do, and so he is a big example of, like... <laughs> Ali Moss. Fucking brilliant. His compositions are really smart. Everything that he does has a purpose. Every single piece that you see of his has like a double meaning and that is special and I wish I was that smart. I'm not though. Maybe one day we'll see. Now here's somebody who I just recently found who I fell in love with. I don't even know his name. Look at me. What a jerk. Julian Ardilla. He's a Colombian illustrator and look at it. Look, it's so freaking good! His symbology is really interesting. He plays with surrealism and with death and with life and with religion and it's just like, what am I looking at? I love it though. I want to make, I want to make this stuff. I just have to narrow my focus, man. I just gotta like, get, I just gotta do the groundwork to say like, mm, Follow the path that you have, you have to set. So, so what, is, what does all this mean? If I put all of my influences together, 
but let's just do that. When we put everything side by side, I think that there are a couple clear things that come to light. And yes, I know not all of these images were images that I talked about previously. I didn't get into like isometric space. Like I'm super into isometric perspective, guys. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna like marry isometric perspective. When I put all of this side by side, things that stand out to me are minimalism, gold, line art, simple composition, and isometric perspective. So that's five five things that I've pulled from, from these images. And there may be other obvious things that I'm not picking up right now. If you see anything, leave it in the comments because it's gonna help me out a lot. Oh, surrealism, that's the obvious thing. Surrealism is my happy number six. Here's what I'm about to do. For the next three months, I'm going to restrict myself to only drawing an isometric perspective when drawing environments, to using line art, be it black line art or color it, Surrealism? Should I give myself surrealism? Yeah, f***ing sure. Surrealism. Everything that I draw for the next three solid months has to have line art, has to be an isometric perspective when applicable, impl applicable, applicable, and has to have surreal elements. So bada bing, bada boom. Thank you guys so much for coming along this journey with me. I feel like I need you. Does that make sense? Let me, okay, let me clarify. It helps me to have somebody else's expectations in my life that I need to live up to. And to share with you that I'm doing this, and I'm gonna commit to this for the next three months, it helps me tenfold because now I have to prove it to more than just myself. So I'm excited, I'm excited to move forward. Follow me on my social media. All those links are in the downstairs part. Not a vagina. The description, I mean, it's not, you get it. I made, a, I made a sex joke. Like this video, subscribe to my channel. I put out new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And sometimes I put out vlogs on the weekends. I might stop saying that because I haven't put out vlogs on the weekends in the last two weeks. Ooh. Get it right, thanks. Yeah, I know I got a haircut. Can we stop talking about it? Jesus.